Today's Couple Tea Podcast is going to be all about girl talk. We're going to talk about periods. We're going to talk about, you know, boys kissing, awkward stories. Basically, we're going to have Josh react. Why to, do I need to be a part of girl talk? Because I, there's wanna, a reason it's called girl talk because it's not you're supposed one of the to be in today. front of me. I don't want to be one of the girls No, today. you're one of the girls today. I don't want to be one you're, of the girls You're today. in the hot seat and you get to react and we're going to talk through it because we want a boy's perspective in girl talk. That's right. I feel like a lot of times in girl talk is like you don't get the guy's perspective. So we're going to get the guy's perspective. Perspective. I don't so. know if you want that perspective, but welcome back to your couple of tea podcast. <laughs> it's your boy Josh. And it's your girl Katie. And today we're gonna get girly and the We girl do talk. have a daughter now, so I guess um I you? might as well get used to these conversations. Obviously, she's only six months old, but yeah, yeah. Um, we got some time before I got some time, but it's it's time to build up uh But I feel like it's good to get your head on the uh, like head on your shoulders because it's like there's gonna be things that I feel like you should be informed. So like when she's having boy trouble or she's having things, that way you can be the best girl dad. Or there's like six of her girlfriends here and they're all having girl talk. Yeah. And like, and like you're in charge of I, watching them all. Like I go no, somewhere. No, no, no. That's when I'm going to be gone. And he's like, I'm out. Like, I'm out. No, no, no. Okay. So anyway, let's, let's just get to it. Are periods worse after having a baby? You know I love how she's asking me. Like I like it's girl talk for you. Well, well, yeah, I'm just I know. here. I don't know. So. I don't know either because I haven't had my period yet. It's Isn't I'm, that weird? Well, no, it's kind of nice. So I'm six months postpartum and I haven't had my period yet because I'm breastfeeding. And when you breastfeed, it like pushes it back like even further. Mm. So I'm not mad about it. Um, And what? On the receiving end, I'm also not mad about it. <laughs> I feel like I'm not that mean when I have my period though. Like, no, you're not. But there's just a tad bit more of emotional. There risk. is. But it's normally like two days before my period. And that's like about it. Do you think it's going to be worse? I don't, it could be. I've heard it's pretty bad. I've heard when really? you get it back, it's bad. Like every time or just like one Unless time. I get pregnant before I get my period again. And you can get pregnant without having your period. Interesting. Yeah. So let's just skip that whole period phase. You yeah, know we what I'm just saying? I'm that. down to skip that. Because honestly, I feel like when I was on my period, I felt like my hormones were a little crazier than when I was pregnant. No, I would agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I feel I, like you didn't have like crazy hormones or anything when you were pregnant. You were no. just... Hopefully it's like that for I feel like you're glowing all again. the time, like just high vibes. Yeah. Which was it's, it's awesome. Because nice. I've heard some stories or like, you know, do talk where it's mm -hmm. just like. But and like, I feel like I'm someone who I'm very like, I know when my hormones are all over the place. Yeah. And like, I felt like I was like really good. Um, Does it feel different down there now after you had Sky? Oh, my gosh. OK, I would say 100 percent because, well, no, now it doesn't. Now it feels normal but it took like six months or like five to six months for what did it feel like well i like you tore. Feel stitches i had a fourth there, degree like... tear it's just like all like the scar tissue still healing so it just hurt you know i mean think if like your private parts if you like oh, cut it open and then gosh. like you know i can't so how many stitches did gonna, you get it was like nine sutures so it was like nine things of that so like Hundred. Like, I love it. I, if you guys are watching on YouTube, you can see it. But if you're listening on Spotify, she goes, it was nine sutures and shows like a foot long ruler. Like, you're, well, like why? Because like, you you know, like that doesn't make sense. No, like the suture is like the. Oh, you're showing like the length. That was the, the length of the string. So okay. it's like multiple okay. stitches and there was nine of those. So it wasn't nine stitches. It was nine sutures. Holy crap. So that was like. I should know. I watched yeah. it happen. It was pretty interesting. It yeah. was super cool at the time, but not thinking about it, I'm like, holy crap. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. But now I'm good. Um, how, okay. Next question. So how, feels the same now. Everything's good down there. Um, a hundred percent the same. We're almost there. We're almost there. We're not there yet though. Um, sometimes like it's still, I feel like it's still like kind of, I feel like it takes, I mean, I had a fourth degree tear. That's like, and they said that that was one of like the worst tears that they had seen in a while. So like, I always say if you're going to do something, you might as well do it like to the best of your ability. <laughs> is that the best or is that the worst? It depends how you look at it. Everything's point of view. Honestly, though, I like it. Thinking about it, though, I'm like, that's probably the worst it could have been down there. And like, I'm fine. Totally. So like, you know, I think it's good. And I also think working out has helped me so much with that. Um, so I'm super grateful for that. Next question. How do I find friends that are all genuine? I'm in high school and they're all so fake. Did you ever have any problems Ooh. with like fake friends in high school? I feel like in high school, not really. 
I don't know. I feel like I had a really good friend group. And a lot of people I hung out with in high school were kids that, like, I had known for a long time. I feel so. like in high school for girls, girls go through this all the time where it's, like, there's girls who can get really catty and bratty and kind of, like, mean. And you feel like you have a lot of fake friends. I think the thing is to not think too deeply into it because, like, I know you do stay friends with some of your high school friends. But a lot of times people, like, aren't friends with people from their high school. Like, you really do, like, your life kind of begins outside of high school, I believe, too. It's like you meet new people in college or if you don't go to college, like you just meet new people as you grow and get older. So like that doesn't mean that you don't have to like put time into those friendships, but don't think that those are the only friends that are going to be in your life forever because sometimes it can be that way and sometimes like you won't have friends from high school. And yeah. I think to how to deal with people from that are fake, it's like if someone's like giving you bad friend vibes, like just take note of that. Don't treat them different. Be nice to them, but maybe pull back from that friendship, you know, and put time somewhere else. No, I 100% agree. Because like girls can be, I feel like girls can be really mean in high school. And I think also you got to remember is they're growing up, they're going through things too. And actually my sister and I talked about this the other day is like, there were girls to her that were mean to her in high school. And like, they don't even realize that they were mean to her in high school. And I'm like, they probably like, everyone has their own perspective. Like they probably thought that they were bullied in high school when they were the bullies, you know? Yeah. So sometimes I'm like, girls are just going through a lot in high school. High school is such a weird age. There's just mm -hmm. so much going on, especially seeing people like every day. I feel like it's almost easier to have friends in high school. It you is. You see people every day. Like you're, you're keeping up with them every single day. Like yeah. you're forced to be in You literally are forced as to when you're older though. It's like you really have to choose who your friends are. Yeah, when you're older, it's like you have to make an effort to like see someone or like yeah. hang out with someone. So it's like you're really only going to hang out with people, people that you, you really like. With. Okay, next question. Do you ever feel so touched out by the end of the night that you don't want int intimacy with the husband, with hubs? Do you get what she's saying? I Why are you saying. asking me? It's a no, question for I, you. No, but I'm asking if you understand what she's saying. Yeah, I get it. I like, I feel where she's coming from because I remember my mom used to just always be like, oh, I feel like over, or I feel overstimulated because it's like when you have a lot of kids and they're all touching you, asking for your attention, you feel like so overwhelmed that like you just don't want to like be, t you just want to be like not, not touched. I personally, like we only have one kid and I feel like she's a baby, so she's not like like you know like touching me like that true um so for me personally no but i see how that could happen when you're like overstimulated overwhelmed um but i think the thing is is like maybe just communicating with your partner that you feel overstimulated and then maybe he can make an effort to help you um how do you help someone if they feel overstimulated by like helping out with the kids more be like how okay. can i help you if you feel overwhelmed or overstimulated because if you feel touched out like sometimes i understand how moms could feel touched out because it's like kids are constantly mom 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 it's like you can't even have a thought to yourself then the last thing i feel like they probably want to do when their husband comes home is like you know be intimate with them because you feel touched out like you feel overwhelmed that's true so i think if you could communicate that with your partner maybe that that could help and like seeing if he could help in any way with that and then sometimes i feel like Maybe you feel touched out, but maybe it's a different type of touch that you need from your partner. Not in like a weird way, but like maybe like to be loved and desired rather than to be like how kids You mean can when you say intimate, like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. See, I personally, I think that's like a stress reliever. Yeah, but I also mean like, I guess it could even be like a hug or a kiss. And it's just like, you just feel irritated. True. Maybe I think, but then I also think that that can cause problems between the husband and wife if it's not communicated why you feel touched out. Because like, there's been times even where I feel like I've been stressed and like doing something and you'll come behind me and you'll like hug me or something. But it, it feels like, not like annoying, but like, I'm like, oh my gosh, like, cause I'm just stressed out. And then you almost not like get offended, but you're like, oh, I tried to like hug you. And like, to me, it wasn't, it's like, I want that hug. I just was like overwhelmed and i can't even explain it but it's like not like a but i do want your love you know yeah i don't really know because i feel like i'm, it's, I'm I like feel a like touchy feely it, person so like for me I, which I, I love like if i'm busy doing something and someone's like hanging on to me like yeah that might be but that's like, where i think it's like me. in the wife's head where it's like where you're doing a lot maybe if there was something taken off her plate then she would feel more relaxed true very um, true just maybe an idea. Okay, next question. How long noted? How long did you bleed after giving birth? We interrupt your guys' podcast for a quick little sponsor from Lumi. And I just I have a question. Have you ever had an embarrassing like BO story? Cause I know I have. I'm just curious if you have. I definitely have. Off the top of my head, the only one I can really remember is just when I forgot to put deodorant on. <laughs> 
or I don't know. I'm very like self-conscious about the way I smell. Like, yeah, I always you have smell good. Very good hygiene. And one thing I will say is like one time I just remember I was out and about and smells like it smells like Taco Bell. It smells like onions from Taco Bell. <laughs> and I literally I don't know was if like, I'd admit that. but but no, but this is when I was like younger. Like I was yeah. really young, and I was like. My, and then I was like, mom, my armpits smell like Taco Bell. <laughs> oh my gosh. She's like, gosh. you need to start wearing deodorant. But what's even better than deodorant is full body um, deodorant. So it's like where you can use it anywhere. And that's kind of what Lumi is. So it's whole body deodorant. It's created by an OBGYN who um, kind of like saw how um, BO was being misdiagnosed and mistreated and how you can use it literally everywhere. Because your armpits aren't the only thing that stink. Let's be honest. Yeah. And it is baking soda free, paraben free, pH balance for safe use and um, below the belt. So it can literally be used anywhere, even down there. So um, Lumi is very, very good and it's safe. And if you guys are having any issues with BO odor, definitely make sure you guys check them out because like there's one thing I feel like is you want to smell good. And when you don't smell good, like you said, you feel like almost like self-conscious of like, yep. I don't know. Or if you guys just don't want to have embarrassing <laughs> stories like us, we actually have a special offer for you guys. For the listeners, new customers can get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code YourCoupleT at LumiDeodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit LumiDeodorant.com and use code YourCoupleT. So definitely make sure you guys check out Lumi and don't have embarrassing stories like us. Just, you know, just skip that step. How long you bled? Yeah, like two weeks, like two and a half, two and a half weeks. I just knew you were wearing diapers. I was wearing the diapers for a while. Kind of, you know. Kind of look double cheeked up with the diapers on. <laughs> I look like I had cake. Honestly, I feel like when, like the two weeks of postpartum. Well, obviously the whole thing is postpartum, but two weeks of wearing diapers or three weeks, it's like, it goes by so quick. Like, cause you're just like trying to figure everything out. That like, I feel like it's maybe for being a first time mom, like you're so not really concerned with everything that's going on with you because you're so focused on like, I have a new baby. Like life is so different. Right. But yeah. Yeah, I don't remember it ever being hard when you were in diapers no like i don't know i knew you were bleeding but it wasn't like uh it wasn't painful or anything yeah. honestly i was just recovering from like what like my tear someone said okay this is a girl talk for sure period tips let's see let's see if you could give any period tips i don't even guy. wanna attempt i'm just gonna get roasted just try and give a period tip I don't even know what a period issue would be. So like, how could I give a tip? For you don't know what a girl would complain about. What would she complain about her period? Cramps, like have Motrin okay. on you, have okay. chocolate on you. See, that's Those are tips. Always carry tampons or whatever you use, pads, whatever it is. Okay, um, here's my period tip is one, this one's a little bit different. I think you need to be self-aware of your attitude and how you're feeling. Cause I feel like sometimes girls can be really mean when they're on their period and Sometimes it's nice to like know if like you feel your hormones, you feel yourself getting angry for no reason, communicate that with people and like not be like, oh, I'm a B word because I'm on my period. So it's an excuse. Just be like, hey, I feel very like emotional right now. So like, please don't, if it's with Stand your significant back. other, like, please just give me some space or like be a little more gentle with me today. Or like, cause I feel like sometimes like I'll tell you that I'll be like, look, I'm on my, like, I feel like my emotions are really not there. So like just be a little more easy with me today. And I feel like that can help you get further. Another period tip is definitely have a Excedrin or Motrin on deck because I, my period cramps are so bad to where I needed that. Um, and then also drink a lot of water, drink a lot of water that helps with the cramps. Does and it? then also this is a hot take, but like, I feel like some people might think to not do this. When I work out and I have really bad period cramps, it hurts so bad in the beginning of the workout. Then they go away and I feel like a million bucks. Like you kind of have to work out through the cramps. Like I know so many people are like, oh, I'm on my period, I have cramps, I don't want to work out. But when you work out, those cramps will go away. It just like sucks in the beginning, the first like 10 minutes of working out and then they're gone. Really? So, yeah. It probably just takes your mind off of it. Well, no, it actually like, it. they say it actually helps because it's stimulating like the blood flow and everything and like it helps your cramps really? like go away. So yeah, that's what like I've read things about like it actually going away when you do that. Working out and drinking water is just the cure for everything. I feel like it really is. <laughs> that's my cure for everything, and I feel for like it same. helps. Okay, next one. First date help with awkwardness. See, I feel like this one you can really help with. Why? I don't know. What do you want me? Well, to say? you're a guy. Like you've been on first it's dates. It's girl like... talk. Okay, so what? What would you say? I would say to honestly, like, I would just say I was awkward too. And it's okay to be awkward. Like, I think guys are nervous too. Like, were you never awkward on the date? Do you not have anything? No, I was definitely awkward on dates. So what would you do to try and like be less awkward? 
I uh, what was the question again? I don't remember. It was first date help with awkwardness. Uh, you just gotta be you, be confident, have fun, mm -hmm. not be stressed out. I think just think that like it. Who cares if they think you're weird or if they don't like you after? Then they're not meant to be. So it's like be yourself. I mean, being nervous is totally normal. I remember the first time Josh picked me up, I felt like I was going to throw up. And I hated the feeling of a first date so much that I was like, I hate this feeling. That's weird because I, like, I didn't feel like that at all. Yeah, you never have. Uh, like some people are like, oh, I don't get nervous on dates. I'm like, I get so nervous. Like, Oh, I may be like a little nervous, but like not that level of like. I nervous. was. I literally felt like I was going to like, throw For me, up. like the worst case scenario is like I pick you up and we're driving. Like literally worst case scenario and like something really weird happens, I guess. Or I don't even know because like I didn't don't even think like that. But it's like. And I just turn around and take you back home and just like be like, oh, I got to go. And then we never talk again. Like, see, that's whatever. like a logical thing. But in like my head, like, like a girl's head, scenario. like I'm like, oh, my gosh, what if he kisses me and I mess up? What if I like say something awkward? What if I like what if I had to fart? Like, I don't know. Like the things that go through my head. I'm like, what if my stomach wakes it makes a weird noise? Like, so I was nervous. I'm like, what if I sweat? Like, I don't know. Yeah, but these are those are all things that are like human. Like everybody has. I know like that going on in their life so i feel like it's like not that weird it really isn't so that's why i was just like overthinking and now i'm just like it really doesn't matter like you're either it's gonna work or it's not and if it doesn't like oh well like you're not gonna who cares you know yeah. but no, I, yeah i never i feel like i never really got that nervous i feel like just days. try and be confident and just don't try and be someone else don't try and put on a front for anyone it's gotta be um, you just, just be you fun. okay next question um, this is when did you get your period and where do you know I've told you this I'm curious if you know your first period yeah do you know how old I was the 15 yeah I was 15 I don't know where okay so I was a freshman I was or maybe I was 14 I was either 14 or 15 because it was my freshman year and uh, I think I was 15 and it was right before a basketball game and I just remember and this is actually funny because this is kind of a weird thing is every other girl had started their period like in middle school and I like didn't like I started in high school and I was like what's wrong with me why am I so weird why am I not like and I wanted to start my period because I felt so left out because all the other girls had started their period I was like I'm not a woman like I was like I don't have boobs I don't have this like I was just such like a little girl and it's so funny because I feel like you just want to fit in so bad even the fact that it's like I want to fit in so much that like I wanted something that was like terrible like i'm like who wants a period like it's not really that great i literally would google like how to start your period early like i'm not kidding like i really wanted to start my period really because i felt like i was like everyone would talk about it. i just felt so left out like and i was like what would you say would you just be like yeah i haven't got mine yet or would you lie i can't remember no i think i always said like i hadn't started mine like i really? never i never said i started it but i would tell my one teacher i'd be like oh can i go to the bathroom like i have really bad cramps because I knew that if you said that, you could, they would always You're say just yes. To get out of class. So, like, I could get out of class with that. So, like, I definitely lied to a teacher about that. I'm not saying that's good, but like, I definitely, like, I just had to go pee and I wanted to walk around, needed a break from class. Fair enough. But, um, so I would like Google it. And like, th that's when I started it was in ninth grade. It was right before a basketball game. I was so nervous though, because one, I didn't know how to put a tampon in. So I just, my friends like here, use a pad. But then I was like, this is so uncomfortable. Like we're gonna have the podcast for a quick sponsor from first form guys. First form is something that we love so much. We talk about it all the time because it's a high performance lifestyle brand. And it literally just fits in our everyday life with everything we do. Like the protein powder, the pre-workout, the energy drinks, the vitamins, the greens, the reds, the like creatine, the snacks. I like the protein bars and then the meat sticks like literally we use so many of their products honestly like, it's kind of funny because i feel like every time we talk about it it's like we want to talk about everything we use and as we say it i'm like we oh use my everything. gosh we use a lot of their products and i'd like to think we're high performers no i I, I would like to think so and also i just had my friend try it out too like i keep giving like little things to my friends because i'm like i have to put you on like try this and, the, and literally my friend yesterday she's like that pre-workout was probably like the best pre-workout i've ever had oh, no doubt. and i was like i told you i put you on so, so i'm gonna put you guys on yeah. if you guys need a good pre-workout if you guys need good greens and reds if you need good protein powder energy drink their protein powder i think their flavors are definitely like superior above Absolutely. other brands they also have apparel them. too so if you guys want to check out anything first form or anything we talked about in this podcast make sure you guys check it out down below down and below. use our links to support the couple t podcast baby oh yeah like 
I mean, think about it. Like it literally feels like you're wearing like a diaper, like when you're not used to it. And then I was like, how am I supposed to play a basketball game in this? The whole oh, game. Oh, you had a basketball game? Yes, it was right before. I was at an away oh, game. Oh, I thought you were going to like someone's basketball game. No, it was uh, my basketball uh, game. And oh. now I'm like paranoid because I'm like, oh my gosh, what if this pad like falls? Like I didn't really know anything. I'm like, what if it falls out on the floor? I'd be traumatized for life. And then I think someone had spandex. So what I ended up doing is I put the pad on, then I put spandex on because like it makes it like yeah, all tight. Like and then it wouldn't. And then I, but I still was so paranoid. Like I feel like I played probably so bad that Did game. Did you tell your parents or your mom? No, I don't think so. You just kept it to yourself? Yeah. I think I told her eventually because then like she like would buy tampons and stuff, but I didn't tell her like right away. True. But I feel like as a guy, like at that age, I don't, I really can't remember what I was thinking, but that's not even something that like goes through your mind. Like, no, because you just, it's not, not what's around you, but it's funny too, because like, so, like I never like thinking you being a girl dad, I wasn't like, Hey dad, I started my period. Like it wasn't something like that. Like, I feel like I just started my period and then I, I'm pretty sure I probably told my mom right away. Yeah. But like, maybe not that moment, but like, cause I don't know if she was at the game, but then probably like, I was like, oh, I need tampons. Like, can you get them? And she didn't make like a big deal of it. It wasn't like, oh, you know, I was like, oh yeah, I can get you tampons. And then like, it's not like a weird, cause then I'm pretty sure I just had my period and my dad never asked or never like, I don't know. It's like, why? But you, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> she I just knew how to like insert it and everything. You were just ready. Oh, to, a like... tampon? Um, No. So that's actually a funny story. I do have a story about that too, is I kind of thought, and I still kind of think this, me personally, I know I don't think it's gross if other people do it. I thought, I felt like it felt gross if I wore a pad because I just didn't like the feeling of it. It was like a texture thing. So I was like, I need to use tampons. And so I like put a tampon in and I didn't put it all the way in. And I, and I was like walking and I was like, oh my God, this is so uncomfortable. And like my friend was like, oh, you'll get used to it. And I was like, yeah, I'll just get used to it. So like it wasn't all the way in. So I could like feel it. You know, like I couldn't see it, but it wasn't like all the way in. So yeah. I could like kind of feel it when I was like walking and stuff. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, this is terrible. I'm like, this is literally like so uncomfortable. And everyone's like, oh, you just get used to it. Cause they were thinking like, oh, I put it in right. No, it turns out I just didn't put it in right. And then someone was like, dude, you got to put it all the way in. So that way, like you don't feel it. It shouldn't feel like that. And then I like, I honestly just figured it out. Like I was like, look, I'm going to figure it out. Some girls would have their friends put it in there. And I was like, I was such like a private really? girl. Like I was like, I'm not letting my friends see me naked. Like that's weird like i was like i don't you know some girls are very much like they're walk yeah, around yeah. and like i don't mean any shame that that's just not me like i just i was not the like i was so scared i think in like sixth grade you had to change for gym class and you had to change in front of each other all you had to be in was your bra and underwear but that to me i was like oh my god i was like they're gonna see my bra and underwear and now i'm like wow the fact that that was like a big deal is so funny right in sixth grade i mean it makes sense Oh yeah. And then in high school and ninth grade in swim class, you have to change in front of each other, um, like totally naked. I was not okay with that. I was like, this is weird. So I would change in the stall and like a lot of girls would really, yeah. Oh, I'd go in the stall. I mean, I was like, who wants to be like change in front of like, I don't know. High school girls are so mean. That's true. Like, I just, I don't know. Like, I was like, I don't need anyone seeing me naked. Like, I just wasn't comfortable. Like, I don't know. No, that's fair. And I was a very, like, innocent, like, kid. Like, I just, I don't know. You could always do, like, the towel change where you have, like, I, I, I guess would for do a that. girl, no, I would do, I would do like, that. Like, I'd kind of, like, put over and, slide. yeah. So, like, sometimes I go to the bathroom, sometimes I just change, like, but I, it was always, like, in the corner. Covered, like, yeah. You know? So, yeah, that's when Mike got my period and a little girl talk on that. A little basketball. Yeah, it was... I was excited though, but I also was like, oh, this is not the time. I was like, oh no. Seems some, like that's something so weird to be excited about, I feel like. It is so weird to be excited about. Like, I bet you not that many girls. I'm bleeding. Yay. <laughs> I just wanted to, like, I don't know. No, I know. get it. I get it. You just feel so like, because, like, I mean, that was everyone had started. Yeah. Like, literally everyone. So I felt like I was the only one. No, I get it, because I don't. I never had facial hair in high school. So you probably wanted like, everybody facial. had facial hair. I was like, I wanted facial hair. And now it's like, I have Why to shave like every day and it's like, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> okay. This is a question you can answer too. What's something you would tell your younger self? Um, probably to just always be confident and have fun and don't take life too seriously. Yeah. Uh -huh. I would say be confident. Um, I feel like I was kind of confident in high school, but I would say just don't listen to the kids who make fun of you, which I didn't listen to them, but don't let it bother you so much. And just like kids who are mean in high school, like 
that probably means that like they're going to continue being me in your life and just like it doesn't matter and i felt like in high school you thought like the popular kids were so cool and then it's like i kind of my mom used to always be like oh the popular kids like those aren't going to be the kids that are going to be cool later in life it's normally the kids who are like you know a little bit nicer like they might be nerdy now but they're gonna have their glow up later or like they might not be the hot cool kid now but they'll be and like i kind of believed her on that but i'm like it was kind of true i was like it's called peaked in high school you know yeah it and happens i, I happens think people i think just like having fun with everything not taking things too seriously not worrying about what other people say um also oh this is something i tell my Ooh. younger self is that not that school doesn't matter but that is not the only way to be successful in life yeah. because i felt like i i knew that like i wasn't going to be like super successful with something like i wasn't gonna be a doctor i wasn't gonna be you know like some like high up job with school because like i had like okay i had a's and b's but i wasn't like the kid who was getting straight a's and like just like a scholar you know and so like to me sometimes i, I was know. like oh am i not going to be successful because like i don't have these grades or i didn't get this high on the act score or the sat i'm like it does that like that does not determine your value of where you're going in life if you're not good in high school that doesn't mean anything um i mean it's great to be good in high school that's that's awesome but if you are not someone who is getting good grades you're not someone who thinks they're oh i'm not book smart that doesn't matter that does not determine your success in life yeah i feel like that was such a younger thing like i, f I feel like a lot of people know now there's so many ways yeah. to make money I mean, people do, have, but, but it kind of depends on like your parents and, and who's telling, like who's giving you that information. Like I know school is important. I'm not saying it's not important, but I'm, if you are not good in school, that does not mean you're, you have no value. That does not mean that you can't be, doesn't mean you can't, you can See, be whatever you want still. I think the issue though, like as not being a parent, looking at it from like a parent perspective is I think a lot of kids, including myself when I was in high school, aren't good at in school because they don't apply themselves well uh, well you know and so like i feel like as a parent it'd be like oh like kind of sucks my not sucks but it's like my kid could be doing better like, yeah i want them to be the best they can be so like i could see that because i could have got better grades okay. i just didn't really apply myself see i applied myself though and i got yeah. good grades but i didn't get the best grades so i was like i'm applying myself i'm trying like almost, I'd say about like 95% of my hardest, like I was trying to get good grades and I couldn't get straight A's. So to me, it felt like I was like, I'm just not as smart as these other kids. But I was like, like book smart. I didn't feel like I was as book smart, but I was like, I, and that some didn't like hit my confidence, but I kind of was like, dang, that sucks. Like I'm really trying. But one thing I will tell you guys is like, to me, I think school isn't end all be all, but I think your effort is end all be all. I think my my willingness to always make sure I turned to my homework, always make sure I at least tried hard on the test and like did what I was supposed to do is like kind of played into my YouTube career. Cause it's like having that like determination of like doing something that you're told you're supposed to be doing is important. So 100%. I don't think school is a hundred percent important, but I think your willingness to participate in school is, I think it's really stupid when kids just don't try at school at all. Yeah. Like I think that's stupid. Um, just because I'm like that just, yeah, you might not be good at school, but if you're not going to apply yourself, how is that going to play out in any other job? If you want to be a YouTuber, but you don't apply yourself, well, how are you going to be successful? I agree. So I think applying yourself is important, but like what you get on those grades isn't very true. Um, how do you deal with mean girls? We kind of talked about this. I would just say if someone's being mean to you, I, I'd say, honestly, don't be mean back because then it's just going to cause more problems in your life. But don't just like accept it. Just I think just kill them with kindness because then it honestly makes them think like, wait, it yeah, really honestly, does I feel work. like people never want to be mean to someone that doesn't have a reaction. Like, yes, when you yes, don't react. Yeah. Like when you don't have a reaction or you don't pay any attention to it, it's like, why would someone keep? poking at you like i think i learned that at a young age mm -hmm. with a younger brother is when you don't react when he does annoying he, like he would do annoying stuff on purpose and i just wouldn't react and but then like, it like in makes my head, him I'm so like, mad oh my god it's annoying me so bad but then you just don't do anything and then they're like oh they either don't see what i'm doing they don't hear it like i'm not being annoying enough and then, and then they, they move stop, on or they, they don't care yeah i'd say just don't react that was a good one Okay, I want to get my first Brazilian wax, but I don't know how it will feel. Yikes. Honestly? There's, okay, some, th there's some things girls have to do that are out there. Well, they don't have know? to, but if they want well, to. Well, not have to, but like I just, as a guy, it's like never had to figure out a tampon, a period, deal with the bleeding. Yeah. 
never have to give birth. Um, breastfeed. Don't have to breastfeed. Don't have to um, whatever. Get a Brazilian wax. And then okay. Good a Brazilian wanted. wax freaking hurts. But and I always get a little nervous. Before. Just the pose you have to do on the yeah, bed. Yeah, you do it's feel very, very vulnerable. Vul it's very vulnerable. I thought I obviously I've never done it, but I've. Katie has showed me it it's hurts, kinda... but it's kind of nice to have like if you go on vacation and you like, you know, because like if you shave, sometimes there's like stubbles and stuff. Not it's just like it I'd is say. it is. No, not necessity. I th honestly what I want to do is laser because I feel like that would be it's like that's painful when you do it, but then it can last for a while. But people say to wait till after you're done having kids because your hormone change, you could like still right. grow back. after. Also, like girls have to go to the OBGYN like for, the, for those first couple of times got to be so weird. I mean, I don't I feel like oh the weirdest gosh. thing a guy has to do is get a physical when yeah. like, the doctor you used to do that kind of young. Yeah, that was always weird, but never that weird but it's not like they're like seeing you completely naked i remember the first time i went to my OBGYN, i felt like it was like scarring because like i was i think i was 19 and you're supposed to go way younger but that was the I, first time you went yeah i was 18 or, no i think i was 19 you're maybe supposed to go like yeah at 16 like, i grade, begged no. my mom not to i was like please don't make me go please don't like in high school Why? it was so like i was like i don't want someone to see me naked yeah but it's like a doctor doesn't matter like when you're a little girl and you're just like awkward shy like you don't want someone it's just see, think about it literally a couple of years ago from 16 um when i was in middle school i didn't even want someone to see my underwear and bra i thought that was a big deal no i agree but like it's a doctor you know and yeah yeah and guess, like maybe, guess what guess what? what doctor was my mom's OBGYN who was a dude he was six years old okay yeah, you're like a dude a to weirder. you naked when like True. when i when you're at that age and like you haven't even you know you and no one's seen you naked yet so like true you know i'm like let alone like a, it's just still weird so i was like terrified at 16 i was like please 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 and she like didn't make me and then when i was like 19 my mom was like you really should and then i was like i know i should so then i went in and oh my god it was so awkward like he was like he was a, nothing against him he was like some like 60 some year old dude but i'm like this is just so uncomfortable it was just so uncomfortable for me. And now as I get older, I'm like, oh my God, it's not that big of a deal. Like whatever. But also even now I wouldn't want a guy OBGYN. Yeah, I would say. I, I would I rather, feel like I just feel more feel comfortable. Kind of weird. I just feel more comfortable with a girl. And even though it's not in that way, it's just like, it just makes me feel more comfortable. I'm not that type of girl who's like very like, everyone can see me naked. Like, I feel like definitely once you have a baby, like you do not care as much because so many people and like, you're just like, whatever. It's my, it's like natural. But like, I was just genuinely a more private person like that. Yeah, I, I would say after going to the OBGYN for the first couple of times while you're pregnant, I mean... You're kind of exposed. Yeah. Like, I feel like it would be a little awkward with a guy. I don't know. Like, the the worst thing, that, like, when you'd get a physical as a guy. Well, not the worst thing, but when you were younger. Like, obviously, I was shy. I was a shy kid. So, same yeah. thing. Like, I don't want people to see me naked. But, like, usually they just have you drop your pants and, like, your shirt would be there. And they would just, like, feel and, yeah. like do the cough test but like they like lift you up like completely and like just totally expose Spread. you You're like oh yeah that'd be a lot but i don't know i just feel like also because like when they like are OBGYN, they're like okay i'm gonna like t they're like apply pressure like whenever they're gonna like do anything they like tell you but i'm just like if a guy was there it'd be so weird i would just it wouldn't be no it really, shame I mean, it really I wouldn't it. be but also i feel like if i was in labor i would not have cared if like guy nurses were in there because no. at that point i just really didn't when you're in pain i feel like you do not care and you're like whatever but like when you're like totally Again, it's normal. just a doctor they're just doing their job but yeah yeah, yeah. i could see it if i was a girl i wouldn't want and, so, and I feel like once you have a baby, then your next one, you're like, whatever, it's not that deep. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like in the beginning, you're like, oh, I'm nervous. Okay. Someone said, will I ever find the one? I'm 22 and still haven't even had a boyfriend and I'm losing hope. You got plenty of time. You have plenty I mean, you're of time. Young. You're 22, but. It's um, funny because I remember when I was young and even in high school and I didn't have a boyfriend yet. I did have a boyfriend in high school, but like my freshman, sophomore year, I was just like, oh, like how come everyone else has dated so many people? What's wrong with me? How come I don't have a boyfriend? And then like once I had one and then after I didn't, once we broke up, I was single for like three years. And I was like, am I going to be forever like alone? Like what? I honestly think having that time to yourself is so important just because if you think about it, it's like there's so many people out there. You will meet the one and there's no rush for it. Like enjoy your time being single and spending time just learning you as a person. Take your time and just like I think God will bring the right person to you at the right time. Because I think everyone's timeline is different and don't compare yourself to other people because what God has planned for someone else, your story might be completely different. And that just because it's not happening yet doesn't mean it's not going to be worth it. 
I think that good advice. Um, every, I mean, think about it. Like you can't just be in a rush for something that's out of your control. I think just work on yourself, getting yourself ready to be the best significant other for someone and just the best version of yourself. Um, yeah. yeah. And maybe just go on some dates for fun and yeah, you know, like a date doesn't have to be, I feel like people take dates like so seriously. Like it could yeah. just be like, getting to know someone like it, it could be even like ha- even like a friend you like- could be like totally not compatible and it, but at least like you're having that com- one-on-one conversation and you're you seeing to know you- someone even a little bit more it's yeah. not even like a bad thing and like- you're seeing what you like and don't like in a partner and i think that's really important to know like what type of person you're looking for um but also like don't lose hope like it's really not you're 22. You're so young. You are so young. And I know sometimes like if you start comparing yourself to other people, you'd be like, oh, well, they've been in relationship for this many years. Just keep waiting. Cause like, honestly, sometimes I feel like people are in the wrong relationship and they might miss what God's trying to give them. So it's like, think about it. If I was so eager to just be in any relationship, I could have been dating someone that was just kind of like, okay, like we, we worked, but then I could have missed out on Josh. So it's like, I think being single isn't that bad when you look at it like that. Very true. Um, Because you're just maybe waiting for the right person. Okay, next one. How to balance diet and losing weight but not cross the line to restriction or eating disorder? I actually really like this question because I felt like when before I met Josh, I was so like, oh, I want to be fit. I want to be skinny. I want to, and I was like trying to like eat a certain amount of calories or do like weird diets. And then Josh kind of taught me the difference of like just trying to eat and make sure your body has enough protein and work out right. And I felt like then I could eat kind of whatever I wanted, but I wouldn't go crazy with it versus when I was restricting food. And it made me think only about I mean, food. not just protein. I, there's like, you gotta have the, enough carbs, fat, protein, depending on how you're training, what your goals are. There's so many, so many, yeah. like things that go into it but it's just like having a little bit of knowledge of that like i mean one of the diets you were doing when we first met was like i don't know some random shake thing i don't know my mom was doing it and so and i was like oh yeah, i'll try I'm like, it you're you're gonna feel like shit all the time like yeah and there's i did no nutrients in this there's no, no i felt so terrible you're gonna have energy to work out you're eating no carbs or anything ever and when you're not eating and all you're thinking about is what you're gonna eat the next meal if you're trying to diet and it is such a like toxic mindset i think to be thinking about food 24 7 like that and so like once i met josh i really start, started just like kind of eating what he was eating and then i was like wait a minute i don't think about food all the time and i was like i actually am less i actually have less body fat more muscle i feel better and that was all because i was working out hard and not working out hard to be like i gotta be so skinny i gotta look like this person this person i was like i just really started to enjoy the workouts that i was doing and not obsessing over food and once i was stopped obsessing over food i stopped eating as much because all i was thinking about food and i'd start like binge eating so to me it's like don't diet just make sure you're eating and making healthy choices. And that doesn't mean all the time. It's like, I would say, make sure you, this is something I do is I never really have like a junk food breakfast unless it was like a weekend. Like if for, if it's morning, don't like, don't eat cereal. Like that's just, it's like, you can make a good yummy breakfast that's still better for you and switch that out and get in the habits of having like a healthy breakfast. Also make it easy for yourself. Like for example, this morning, um, I knew we had to get some stuff done and I was like, oh, like, I don't really feel like making a a breakfast, but I'm like, it would be unbeneficial for me not to like have anything. I'm like, I'm going to feel like crap and then I'll probably just be starving and eat something random. So I just, I was like, I had a first one protein shake. I was like, at least I'll get some protein in. It's good for me. My body needs it for sure. And so I just made it, it make it easy. It literally took me 10 seconds, mixed it up, drank it. Yeah. Went on about my day. And like, honestly, I still feel like, like now, like I still have like dessert. We'll have desserts at night. Like oh, I yeah. kind of feel like I eat whatever, but I don't go crazy. Cause it's like, I I'll have it, but I know that I can have it in a couple of days. Cause I'm not like, this is the only time I'm going to let myself eat bad. I'm going to eat it all. And like, I feel like when you diet, you're kind of just like, I feel like a diet doesn't work. It has to be like a lifestyle and not like a totally like, I eat clean, I never eat sugar, I never eat this lifestyle, unless that's what you want. But that can be really hard and very toxic. I think like the word diet, like technically, if you're like, you know, counting macros or anything, like you could consider that a diet, but like you need to turn whatever you do into like a lifestyle. Yeah. And also like make things that you look forward to eating still. So like I love like when we do our like, um, 
what's it, like our protein oats, our cold oats in the morning. I look forward to that breakfast so much. Like it oh, tastes yeah. so good to me. So it's like, you can still have healthy, like alternatives of things that taste really good. You just have to find what you like and switch it out. Um, but the only yeah. time I think like a hardcore diet makes sense is if like you really only care about hitting a certain goal for like a certain like time of like oh i want to be this way for my wedding and i want to look like this and then after that i will never care again then like maybe some crazy strict diet makes sense for you because like also that's though, your goal but like again that's not something that like you can usually maintain for a lifestyle i think a healthy lifestyle is the most important thing also i think a lot of people as they focus on the scale and the scale is going to mind f you so much because especially with girls because if you start working out and you're eating right your number might not drop on the scale like i remember we did a body um scan test and it basically shows you how much body fat versus muscle okay guys five pounds of fat is like this big and five pounds of muscle is what like this big yeah. so it's like I literally was the exact same weight from muscle one time to the next time, but I looked like a different person. Like the, I had like more muscle on my body, but I wasn't bigger. I actually looked smaller. It just weighs more you way leaner, but muscle. That's the thing. Like, again, she was saying fat is this big, like a foot long, big five yeah. pounds and five pounds of muscle is literally like the size of your fist. It's way smaller, but it weighs the same. So like, again, you might not see the scale go down, but like maybe you lost a lot of body fat. But I was so focused on the scale and I almost feel like stepping on the scale all the time for me personally, just kind of set me down. Like I was like, I'm eating so healthy. I'm doing all these things. Like, why aren't I losing weight? And like, also there's like body water weight. Like, it, so it's just like, to me, I think stepping off the scale and just going off how I feel was was way more beneficial for me and now i honestly never really weigh myself because i go off of how i feel and um i even work out for a feeling rather than to be skinny or be fit it's like i want that like feeling of like that positive energy that it gives me yeah you've so, turned it into like a healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. so. um okay next question have you ever been on birth control i have not been on birth control and i personally no shame if anyone's on birth control because i know so many girls are on birth control I just don't think birth control is, I like deep down, like think birth control is probably really bad for you and not like saying it's bad if you take it, because I obviously think that like some girls need it for certain reasons and it's good. I just think that birth control isn't really as natural, so it can definitely mess with your hormones and um, cause other issues. And like lots of girls have said, said that like birth control has made them like either their um, um hormones go crazy they have gained weight from it they've like lost their period from it like different things so i've just always kind of like stayed away from birth control oh, yeah. and i feel like it's been it's been nice but obviously i understand that birth control is important if like you're not trying to have a baby or certain things there True, is but other, there's other forms of birth control so yeah i mean obviously. to each their own like i am i'm someone who i genuinely believe anyone can make their own decision for me like i was like i just don't want to be on birth control especially because i had gone like all of high school all of like a couple years out of it and i was just like honestly like it's not something that i want to start doing because i feel like my periods are regulated everything's like regular i don't want to mess with that so i just never really played around with it yeah and even like with now, like once we went back um, after my six week appointment, they're like, do you want to be on birth control? And I was like, no, I was like, I don't because my hormones are already like trying to get back to a place. I feel like birth control sometimes can mess with your hormones. Oh yeah. But I know lots of people are on birth control. I'm not saying it's bad. I just personally never wanted to be on it. Um, have you, oh, I already answered that one. Did it hurt being pregnant? Did contractions feel like period cramps? It did not hurt being pregnant. At the end, it was uncomfortable. Um, but that's about it. Yeah. And but just based off hurt. your, like looking at you, I would say contractions are probably way worse than period cramps. Oh, way worse. They're just like, not even really, I feel like they're not really comparable and people are like, Oh, it's a really bad period cramp. I'm like, no, it's just, it just, it's its own thing. Like yeah. it just felt so bad. I mean, yeah, I was going to say, I've never seen you in that much pain during period. I like, could, didn't even know what to do. I felt like paralyzed by like pain. But like, I mean, honestly, it's really not that, I know people get scared of like, oh, if they're pregnant, if they're going to give birth, I'm like, it's so quick. You almost forget about it. Like it's, it's really only like, especially if you get that epidural, like it's not, I mean, you could, I feel like, honestly, yeah, once you had the epidural, you were fine. You didn't even seem like you were in pain at all. Even when you were oh, pushing, I was chilling. Like, it seemed almost no, I, weirdly I, easy, but like, obviously you're on the epidural, but no, because of the epidural, I felt like when I was pushing, like 
it felt fun to me. I was like, this is so exciting. I was like, I'm going to meet my baby soon. Like I was not in any pain once I got my epidural. Um, although I will say contractions right before I did give birth, I felt them again. I was like, wait, is the epidural wearing off? And I got so nervous. All right, guys, this next one's a juicy one. Does SEX, you know, the dirty hurt after giving birth? Does it hurt for you, Josh? <laughs> oh, I, I didn't give birth, so I can't really say, you know. Me personally, because I had a fourth degree tear, yes, it hurt. It yeah. Hurt. Yeah. Took about like five months, maybe almost six for it yeah. to not hurt. But yeah, I mean, when you tear, you got to think like how many like stitches I had and like how much recovery it just takes. You know, it takes a little bit of time for that. It takes a yeah. little bit of time. I okay. would say uh, that wouldn't be fun. Were you nervous? Oh my gosh, yes. Yes. So nervous. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, I would no. be scared. Honestly, in my head, I was like, what if it like <laughs> re-rips or something? Like, I don't know. No, I know. I thought that too. But like, it was all healed, but still like, ooh. Okay. Anyway, did you have any anxiety while being pregnant or um, now that Sky has been born? Do you have any anxiety about like any of that? Or were you like? No. I mean, I was nervous, obviously. But like at the end of the day, I don't know. Once you like stop thinking like it's out of or when, once you stop thinking you have control over certain things, because, like, I really don't. Yeah. Then it's just, you kind of. I'll say, like, once yeah, I, I. feel like you're at more peace. Like, because to are. me, I'm like, yeah, like, something could go wrong during birth or all this stuff. But it's like, even if it does, I don't have control over it. So, yeah. like, why am I going to sit here and, like, stress about it and be, like, anxious? Like, yeah, to be a little nervous or worried or aware of something is a little different. Yeah. But, like, you know. I, I just I just feel like when you don't have control over it, it doesn't you can't fix it. So I 100 percent agree. Like I used to always think like sometimes when I was pregnant, I was like, oh, like what if this happened? And then my place my like my headspace would go to like dark thoughts. And I feel like so many people have like not, like dark, dark thoughts. But you're like, what if this happened to the baby? What if this happened? And just because you're so worried. And then anytime I'd kind of go to that place, I would literally just pray about it. And I felt so much like peace and comfort because I was like, it really isn't in my control. Nothing. Uh, n my worrying will do nothing but harm my body to be honest because i feel like sometimes when you worry and you're stressed it's like stress and anxiety can like do so much harm for your body and like your mind and everything it's like you don't want to be in that place and i think just knowing that it's out of your control and that like there god has a bigger picture a bigger plan whether it's what you want or not what you want is kind of like relieving like what you said oh, yeah it's like when you know that like you don't have control of something it's like why would i waste my time worrying about something i have no control over like even the day when we had her and you were bleeding at like three in the morning like obviously my mind went to like very like scary yeah. thoughts and like obviously i was worried i was so worried i almost passed out mm -hmm. but at the same time like i like on that drive i felt a little comfort because i was like saw in god's hands like mm -hmm. you know like god forbid he was like, like didn't want this to happen or something bad did happen like obviously we'd be crushed but just knowing, just it's knowing, not, it's all knowing, up to him. So at the end of the day, it's like, it's, we'll it's get what, through it. And yeah, yeah, it's hard. Cause it's like, you know, that he has like a bigger plan, but sometimes it's so hard. Cause like you have your own plan, but just knowing that like, yeah, you don't have control and letting go of control will literally help anxiety so much. And I think just to, for me personally, like praying helps me so much. Anytime I'm scared, let's say like, I'm just like, I don't know, honestly, like sometimes I woke up in the middle of the night and like I get a little scared or like even when you were like gone on your guys trip and I was like alone in my room and anytime I'm scared, I used to do this all the time, even before we were married and I'd sleep in my room, even when my parents were home like, and I'd get scared. I don't know why I just get scared. Like, I don't know. I'd start praying and I literally felt super like comfortable and I felt like at peace and I felt like I wasn't alone and like feeling like you're not alone is like a really good feeling. So I just think prayer. There's power in prayer. Very true. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed our little girl talk. Um, if you guys want another episode girl like this, talk, comment baby. down below some other uh, girl talk, talk questions. next time for sure. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, spicy. we love you guys. We'll see you guys in the next um, podcast.